Okay, we're on page 8 of our notes. We've taken, we've got the definition of torque. We know what those variables stand for. Uh, gamma, capital gamma, is the torque itself in Newton meters. Lowercase gamma, by the way, is this. Capital gamma is this. And we've got the picture. We know net torque is found by adding the individual torques from each force. We know the unit for torque, clockwise, counterclockwise, or anti-clockwise, as we call it anti-clockwise in Britain, and we've got some example we've solved, and here we are, Newton's second law. Before we dive into the second law, I always recap, I have to remember what the first, second, and third laws stand for. The first law says, objects at rest stay at rest, and objects in motion have constant velocity when there is no net external force. So they talk about what happens when there's no net external force. They talk about what objects do when they are in equilibrium. The second law talks about what happens to an object when it's not in equilibrium. In particular, Newton said, if an object feels a net external force, then the object accelerates according to this equation. But here's the thing. This is not how Newton originally wrote the second law. Newton's second law was originally written like this. The net force is equal to the rate, so divided by delta t, the rate at which momentum changes. This is the real second law. This top thing is something we use because it's, you know, it's very useful. But this is how Newton wrote the law originally. So let's show the two are equivalent. Net force is equal to change in momentum, but momentum is defined as mass times velocity. When an object's momentum changes, usually it's because the velocity is changing. So the numerator would be it would be m v final minus m v initial. We could factor out the m, and what we have in parentheses is v final minus v initial. That's just delta v. And what is delta v over delta t? Acceleration. So we do get back to Newton's second law, f net equals m a, the familiar version. But that's not how Newton wrote the law originally. It was written like this. If we want to apply this to angular motion, right, what's the same thing as force when we're talking about rotation? Force, that's kind of like torque. Now, we haven't learned what momentum is when we're spinning, but there is something called angular momentum. This is a good version to write, but the more useful one is uh, F net equals mass times acceleration. So when we're talking about mass, but we're dealing with rotation, what do we use? Oh yeah, we use moment of inertia, or the rotational inertia. What about acceleration? What's the same thing as acceleration, but in the world of spinning, in the world of rotation? We use angular acceleration. So this is the form that's going to be super useful to us. Oh, we didn't finish this. So that's the second law. The third law is action-reaction forces. If object A pushes on object B, B reacts by pushing back with a force that's equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. Okay, on to page 9. In physics, a couple means something very, very specific. No, it's not two people who fall in love and buy a puppy and then walk that puppy around. You know, that'd be nice. There's the dog's tongue, its ears. Not really sure what kind of animal this is, not a puppy. But in physics, a couple refers to two forces that produce torque, but there is no net force. So if we look at the example, which you're going to solve, 
we do this by, here's the pivot, you've got this rod. Notice they say the rod has no mass. All of the mass is concentrated at the ends because of those two spheres. So one force points up, trying to rotate the whole thing around the pivot. This, is, this point is fixed, so it's trying to rotate the thing like this. Right? That's clockwise. The other force points down, and it's trying to rotate the whole bar, again, clockwise. So if you add the two forces, one is up and positive, one is down and negative, so there is no net force, but they both produce a clockwise or negative torque. So you're going to solve this problem. You're going to calculate the moment of inertia. Right? We remember this equation. You'll find the net torque. You'll have to add the torques, the two torques together. Of course, they're identical, right? So you can just double the value, get one torque, and then double it. By the way, remember that you have to find the distance from the pivot to each mass. The only thing I want to point out, when you calculate the tangential acceleration, remember that that depends on how quickly you're speeding up. It depends on your angular acceleration. This is how much you increase in magnitude. But when we find the centripetal acceleration, that depends on how quickly we're turning. So that's omega that tells us how quickly we're turning, how quickly we're changing direction. So we use omega squared r. Now here's the thing. You need to know the omega when t, the amount of time passing that has passed, when t is 4 seconds. So, you know, if your omega is increasing because we're accelerating, then this, the angular, uh, sorry, the centripetal acceleration, that increases too.